How y'all doing? Um, to pick back off what Carla was saying about you know hearing uh, black musicians rock out. So my question is, how important is the role of the movements like the Black Rock Coalition, um, Ghetto Metal, and even more recent emergence of Afropunk um, to propelling that type of music to the forefront? In your perspective, how important are those movements? Um, for me, I, I'm still kind of reverberating with your question, and, and it feels connected to me in that, um, you know, the, the Afropunk movement, what, what I love about Afropunk is that it, um, it really kind of put the, that black, like just the, the unique, the, the um, holding up the unique black voice and, and things like uh, you know like like bold is love um, the bold is love blog uh, Rob fields who who really it's about holding up the unique voice as um, as absolutely relevant so this idea of afropunk was kind of like yeah we're black people like with unique voices that that you know, for maybe a wider audience just means like a black person with a mohawk because it's like, whoa, a black person with a mohawk that's blowing my mind, you know. Um, it goes so much further than that, but it's like even on the surface, it's that idea that like, this is something that is not kind of like compart com compartmentalized. Um, and this kind of addresses what you're saying is like, you know, as I've experienced it spiritually, is the service any artist provides first is to find our voice and to and to say this this is what I'm here to offer. This unique voice, this unique take on on what I'm seeing, this unique um, message. And whatever that is, you know, it's, it's so uniquely definable by you. But um, that's the first, the first act of service for for the community. The second act of service is then um, standing there and and proclaiming it from the mountaintop. You know, which is its own process and has its own perils, but um, and rewards, but. Uh, you know, I think in the end, like what, what Black Rock Coalition did and what Afropunk did afterwards and what, you know, really the, the, the whole society is doing, at least of, of creative people in this country as far as I can see, is saying like we have unique perspectives. These, and unless I'm talking to you as myself, as my authentic self, with my authentic voice, I have nothing to offer you, and I can't relate to you, I can't reflect with you, I can't, um, and like finding that that unique voice is somehow universal. It's some, somehow like through a miracle is like mythologically relevant to everyone else. Well, in the interest of time, I think we got time for two more questions, but you want to say? I mean, I was just gonna say, um, I think in this day and age of the YouTubes and the, the things where views kind of dictate how people perceive something. It's like you don't you don't think something's a hit unless it's had over a million views or you don't think something is worthy unless there are lots of people who have already seen it and given it the okay. And they're kind of, it kind of acts as the same uh, the gatekeeper syndrome that the industry used to have. If they put out a record that meant it was worth something. If they didn't sign a band then that meant that they probably weren't very good. So I think in the in the the movement discussion of you know the Afropunks, the Black Rock Coalitions, the Bold as Loves, all of those are showing momentum for something, like showing that there's not just a small community over there, but it is a group of people who have. I'm just going to use this as a. I don't know. What you <laughs> um, <laughs> but just showing that there's a. It's a group. It's not. It's not. It's it's an, an audience that is worthy of you know support and worthy of. Um, of attention from those people who want to make money off of groups of people. So okay. it's kind of like, there's a group here, please give us what we need and what we ask for. Okay. Yeah, it's like the music industry has been replaced by a million mean 
high schoolers. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to have uh, Bill and uh, Kim do ask your questions kind of back to back, and then we'll close up. I want to talk a little bit about, I guess, uh, obsolescence. And I think we've been getting into a little bit. You know, I've been working with BRC as an advocate, you know, as Guillermo said, you know, for about 25 years. And hearing 25, 25 yeah. Uh, and I'm hearing from Kamara that the exact same things that people were talking about back when I started kind of working with BRC bands is still happening now. So clearly it might be a while, but I'm wondering if you could kind of imagine a world where the BRC is obsolete and what that would look like, what has been done, or will that point come, or will that point not come with BRC? Will never be, be obsolete. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. We'll have a uh, BS, of course, to we'll ask them all, answer them all together. Yes. Thank you, Gregory. Uh, I just wanted to ask Kamara if she could maybe talk a little bit about Brooklyn Country. Because um, I don't write anymore, but if I were, that's what I would be probably pretty much solely addressing now. And I'm, I'm curious for what we're talking about, what you're talking about with, with Matt and you and Richard's experience with the labels, but also this thing of, of the kind of Midtown Black Rock, um, sorry, to talking Sony, like the Midtown big companies, let their power lessening. Why is it that Brooklyn Country is in a way remains so insular? I think I've lived here double the time that you have, and there's always been some bubbling under, but other things, you know, in this last thing, Electro Clash broke out, Free Quote broke out of here, um, Afropunk, but somehow country has never um, had that, that kind of synergy with Midtown, so I was hoping, since you know Jeff Duarte and all these people, the Jalopy scene, could you address that? I was thinking about this, when I was reading Greg's questions and I was trying to figure out, well, do we really need it? Like, do we need, really need the term to put black in front of it? Because now we're hyper-connected. And <laughs> when you're trying to find out about a band or a song that you like, you just go to it. And, and we can connect, and all of us can connect and have community online, and people do. And so I was wondering, is it, is it obsolete? But the problem becomes the invi invisibility because still the media imagery is, for whatever reasons and whatever powers that are in place, always focused not on the other. So the, the system is put in place and built against us before we even got here, before 25, 30, 45, 50, 100, 150, 200 years ago, the system was put in place. So that system is not obsolete, so we have to keep <laughs> fighting it. And we, we're going to need to build super machines that we were just trying to fucking figure out how we can get Black Rock Coalition and Afropunk and Bull This Love and the next, next, next to fucking work it out because <laughs> it's still, there's still problems that we need to work together on and it's just ridiculous to me that, that we are not, but we are. I think the artists are like, dude, okay. I know, I'm myself, I'm just like, okay, that'll be the next car. Yeah. So the divisions within the movement, but we won't get that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, babe. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, okay, let me, let me wrap up. So, um, I think a big thing is terminology. Like, like words really, really start to limit us after a while. And so there's, I, I honestly think for like, just the, the conversation about blackness, like I would really love like blackness to start meaning something more to us. Like, so that it's not just like, so that like Black Rock Coalition and Bold is Love and so that Afro, and I think Afropunk is maybe the closest to like, realizing that, just like, 
just saying like, instead of it meaning this thing that's starting to limit us, like let's, let's start to make it mean these other things that like include more people and then include more people so that these forms can get reinvented into something useful again, right? So, so every form eventually, um, eventually atrophies. So, so like really, you know, making our words like balloon out a little more to, to um, encompass newer ideas every time. And I, I, I feel like because something like Black Rock Coalition was, was there at the beginning and, and is already, a pro like it already means something progressive, but maybe it's starting to feel the pangs of like, of limitation or something. So like, let's make the words mean something more that include more people that, that start to uh, transcend race a little bit for us so that we can, so that we can really build these, these newer structures that, that feel, that feel more freeing. Um, and in terms of with, with, with country, I mean, the, the thing with country is that that is, that's the, that's a machine that is like still going strong. I was just talking to Candia about, you know, I, I, I watch the Grand Ole Opry all the time and it's still like a lot of bleach blonde girls. Like, and the songwriting is getting better, which really gives me hope, but, um, but it's still that moment where you're like, this is getting, this is still getting churned out in, in a really old school way. And that machine has been, you know, is, has been notoriously slow to change. Um, so I don't know why Brooklyn, you know, Brooklyn country, from the inside, I think that seat still needs to work on its, on its, um, you know, presentation. Like it's, you know, I don't think everyone's worked as much and as often and as, I mean, I don't, I still think that like, you still have to be really awesome, you know? And like, just because you're playing country in Brooklyn and not many people are doing it doesn't mean you're 